Okay, so now we come to another very common idea amongst, uh, what do you want to call it, um, eschatological folks, people who deal with prophecy. A whole bunch of them want to say, and there's some justification for it, which I'm going to go through lightly, that the eighth or the beast itself is really Islam, not any kind of Christian version of anything, Catholic or otherwise. And when you look here at eighth, which is supposed to be the little horn of Daniel 2 and 7, you get some kind of seeming corroboration of that because it's bookmarking the Hegira. Okay, which like I said, that's their Exodus. And the whole Quran is written around the book of Exodus. If I live long enough to show that literary style in the Quran, I will. But it really is. Okay, I noticed that like 20 years ago. And I haven't had time to do videos on it yet because all this stuff has come up. But there's the argument without any meter being considered. Oh, well, you know, it's it, the prediction about the new Rome is really Islam taking over. And he's gone nuts now. He used to have, he used to be relatively sane. But there's a guy named Wally Chubat. And when he first got into Christianity, he had a certain window of sanity. But then he went, quickly went wacko. And now, of course, he's wacko for Trump. He has no brain at all. His just mind is completely turned to mush. It's really sad because he used to be a really interesting guy to listen to. And that's his main contention is that it's Islam who's predicted here in Revelation 17. He's not the only guy who says it. There are some other versions of this which basically say that it's Syria that comes back and, you know, stuff like that. Basically, it's, they're saying that the geographical area is in the Middle East. Well, there's a lot of justification to argue that because, again, we go back to Constantine and he founded New Rome and today's name for New Rome that he founded is called Istanbul, where Turkey is. That's its, well, I don't think, you know, Ankara is its capital, but Istanbul is one of its biggest cities. So it's like, oh, well, is this prediction then of Islam? Especially since you've got the eighth here. All right. Wait a minute. I got I got something in my eye. Hold on. I don't cut these videos because it's too much effort. Sorry. I used to be able to do a lot of fancy things, but they changed the software, and now it's harder to do. Okay, the eighth. Is it Islam or not? Well, what we know is it's going to be on the Roman model of fusing church and state. The Roman model was very eclectic. The Roman model was very syncretic. There is a distinct movement afoot today to create Chrislam. You know, Islam itself is busy in the Quran saying, oh, people of the book, people of the book. And, of course, they consider Islam to be the most advanced. But when you read the Quran, you have to laugh really hard because it's just slapstick stuff. It really is. It's like a drunk person talking. But it's a very smart drunk person talking. If you know your Bible and if you know your Hebrew. It's very funny. Okay. But it is, it, it, there's, there's no coherence to it at all okay but there's a lot in common that could bring about especially because people vote for Trump they're stupid enough to think if you vote for Trump and you believe in Good Friday honey you are so dumb to live you'll fall for this Islam claims Christ will come back Judaism claims the Messiah will come back but they don't necessarily agree that he's Christ you know Jesus Christ which itself is the title Jesus meaning uh, the Savior, Yeshua in Hebrew, and Christ meaning the Anointed One. Okay, Islam believes that there's an Anointed One. 
so does so does Judaism and so does Christianity and and it's a question of well who is he well if the Jews decided to say well it's Jesus Christ but they have some convoluted idea of who Jesus Christ is that's very different from the Christians and very different from the Muslims you could see them trying politically to to get together some point in the future and create an eighth think about that for a second So if an eighth, where would it be housed? Doesn't really matter where it's housed, but it sure makes sense to house it in Istanbul, because that's right at the nexus of three continents. It is. It's at the nexus of Europe, it's at the nexus of Africa, and it's at the nexus of Russia, and it's at the nexus of Israel. So really, that's why Constantine chose it as his location. So, is it the 8th? Could be. But, it will still call itself Christian. Okay? It will still have the Musterium moniker. That's why I'm saying, well, maybe a Chrislam sort of thing. And since the Pope and all the other jerks are beginning to say, Oh, well, if you're a good person, you go to heaven. Even Billy Graham fell into that trap. They don't know the gospel anymore. They don't know. Hi, you believe in Jesus Christ and you're saved. You believe you paid for your sins, you're saved. Any other belief that you have is irrelevant. And any other thing you do is irrelevant. Because his payment matters and your goodness doesn't. People don't teach that. Ask one in a hundred Christians how you get saved, and they'll all come up with some kind of version of something you got to do to be a good person. Well, that's what Islam is. You don't know if you get saved in Islam. Even Muhammad quipped that he didn't know if he was saved. How good do you have to be in order to be good enough for God? Well, technically, if God was just to himself, you'd have to be as good as God is, and you can't be. That's why Jesus Christ is God-man, not just man, and not just God. How can God pay for sins? Humanity is sinned, so humanity pays. Okay, but if he's not God, man, then it can't be good enough. But all those distinctions are blurred in our day and got to be blurred long before our day. They were way blurred under Constantine. In fact, they were blurred under Polycarp, who was right up here, um, about here. Okay, about in the 130s to 160s. Everybody forgot what the gospel was. And in the, in the, in the write-ups about Polycarp, who was about 150, now, well, whoever was alleged to be Polycarp said, Oh, by your good deeds, you get into heaven. How can they say that? Sure, logic will tell you that's impossible. And the Bible, of course, says, John 16, 9, concerning sin, because they don't believe in me. And Romans 3, 23, thank you, Dad. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So on the one hand, you sin. Who's going to pay for that? You can't, because now you're tainted goods. And on the other hand, you're human. How can you be the glory of God unless you are God? So unless the person doing the paying is God and man, it can't happen. That logic would tell you that. Even if you didn't have a Bible verse, but you do. You have like a bazillion of them. They're worded all kinds of different ways from Genesis to Revelation. All right, well, but here in Revelation what we're seeing is that year after year after year everybody's coming up with some other goofball idea and they want to unite church and state to, in, in, to enforce their goofball idea so now comes an eighth Islam and it's born from this is how that ought to be translated but it's almost never translated right it's born from the seven yeah 
if you read the Quran, it's all about a mixture of Bible and Catholic concepts that were then prevalent throughout the world. I mean, it's really crazy. Go read it sometime. Wait a minute. So now, is it going to be Chris Long? Well, could be. But in any event, it's of the seven because it arises late, see? The Hegira itself which separates the two kinds of surahs in the, in the Quran. We've got two kinds of surahs. One are called the Meccan surahs, and they're real nice. Islam is peace, yada yada, that's what you hear people say. But there's a second set, also in the same Quran, that are called Medina surahs, and they're after, they start at 623. The Quran is not arranged chronologically, so you always have to look at the preface to find out what kind of surah it is. Surah means chapter. Is it a Mecca surah that he wrote while he was in Mecca? Or was it written 623 and afterwards, which he wrote in Medina? The Medina surahs are what the terrorists use to justify their terrorism. So it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Okay. Now, there's a way to unify it and all kinds of things I could say about it. But the big point is, is that there are these two very different kinds of, of texts. One which um, talks about peace and being nice and all. And the other one which basically says, kill every Jew you find, kill everybody who doesn't believe in the Quran, kill everybody who won't admit that Muhammad is a prophet, and kill everybody who used to believe in the Quran and doesn't anymore. Starting in 623, that's the tenor of what got written in the Quran. All right. And is of the seven, therefore, is demonstrable when you read the Quran. Now, the Quran ends up getting completed two years after this. Muhammad dies at Kais. Kais. He's a, considered a king amongst amongst the Muslims. So there's the Kai truncating him. All right, Ace into yeah, well. Into what? Into destruction is led. Yep, that's what happened. Mo baby, he died 6:32, so he's led into destruction. All right. Yeah. All right. The whole phrase applies to him. All right, but it technically happens only at the first two. Guys, guys. I should say A. It's A. It's A. 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 See, it's more like an A sound. And this is A. E. So it's I. 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 Therefore, you say this is Kai. Modern Greek doesn't say that. But it should. A. E. A. E. And as any philologist will tell you, uh, words get slurred, vowels get slurred over time. So, you know, the, 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 today they say this is K. They just swallow, they just ignore the I. So just K. Well, that's how they pronounce it in John's day. It's Kai E E S. Kai E S. Okay? And this is Apollea, destruction, Hupage, will be led. And that's how he was led. He was led into destruction. Maybe he believed in Christ when he was a kid. I don't know. If he didn't, he's in hell now. Okay? Islam still rises. And when it rises this time, it swarms into Jerusalem. It swarmed into a lot of different places. 635 to 636, it started to swarm into Byzantium as well. And uh, takes over Jerusalem officially in 637, 638. Okay? So, see, here's Kaes. Kaes. So that's where that is. Now we enter a whole new phase of things. 
So in a sense, the, the word eighth to market is a really good idea because now we got a new power that's not Christian at the underbelly of both the old Christian empire, Italy, Europe, and the new one, which is basically in the east. More and more, you know, the Balkans and Jerusalem and Anatolia, you know, extending toward Persia. Okay, Persia basically goes down, Byzantium basically goes down right here. And that creates a power vacuum, which even Sir John Glubb in his book called The Short History of the Arab Peoples, which you can get in Amazon. I read it in college 40 years ago. Um, he remarks on, on how Byzantium and Persia exhausted each other. And that created a nice little vacuum for the rise of Islam. As soon as our boy Mo Baby timely dies at Caes. It's really cute. Biting. So that's what they did. They filled in the power vacuum in Jerusalem. They took over Africa pretty quickly, northern coast of Africa pretty quickly. They swarmed over Persia and Anatolia pretty quickly. And they made it all the way up to Spain. And by the time they get up to Spain, that's down here. Um, which I'm sort of getting ahead of myself. In the middle. Okay, five syllables after this. So that's one, forget the tain, two, three, four, five. So, and the authority and the power. Here's another Kai again. Okay, cutting short all those Kaisers in its wake. And the authority. Okay, but before I get there, I'm going to have to explain the switchover in history. Because there's a whole lot of history that goes on as a result of the Arab swarming um, that puts a lot of pressure on both Byzantium and Europe. And what are they going to do about it? Well, what has been happening in Europe, I haven't been covering much during this time, because the focus is basically introducing the cast of characters. Alright. So, who are the characters that are going to come now? And my voice is going out, so that's going to have to wait to the next increment.